right, great. Well, thank you for joining in. We are going to talk about softball recruiting 101. Uh, the 10 papers, I think you know, so we're going to get started. My name is Joyce Wilhafer. I'm a senior recruiting coach here at NCSA. I've been working here for the past uh, 11 years, helping thousands of student athletes during that time to um, navigate their recruiting. And uh, before I came to NCSA, I was a college coach. I coached at uh, five different schools for 20 years. I coached Division I, Division II, and NAI level. The logos are here on the right. I myself played, uh, played in college, played after college, overseas as a multi-state athlete, and um, also had high school coaches. I say all those things because that way you can see the perspective of where I'm coming from. Simply tonight, uh, what I want to accomplish, the objective is that you're going to be walking away with an overview on what's needed and what you can expect in your journey to get recruited by the top of um, softball coaches. And how we're going to do that is by looking at these topics uh, profile. That's how coaches are going to evaluate you. Talk about your students, what the softball levels are out there, give you a big picture on that. And then leave you with how you can find success. So again, that's record for you um, so you can have that and some notes. So let's get on the profile here. This is how the coach is going to evaluate you. They're going to be able to see um, this completed the form here, profile uh, video and all these different categories on, on here. So on the left here, you know, skills video is going to be very important for coaches to assess, to assess what, uh, what level you appear fit for their school academically. Your GP having records, having posted copies of your test scores, on your transcript, report card, um, you know, making sure that is on there. Your athletic ability, they're going to look at that with your sports stats, and those will, will um, indicate your um, throwing abilities. It could be your home the first, first time, uh, velocities. Size is going to have uh, impact on the cycles, you know, just your overall. Uh, how tall are you? What's your weight? You're going to play a huge part, part into this. They want to where you're playing, so list out your events, uh, showcases, tournaments, sure your information about your travel team and coach contacts are there as well. Um, statistics, if you can get those, those averages, your pitching stats, um, ERS, so on. Um, that would be helpful. And then your awards, any high school awards that uh, you have, have all state, all league, all region, whatever your school um, participates in. So in other words, is your profile ready to be evaluated? That's the first step. Sure, you get that information. Just breaking down all these areas of where they're located. If you're under your profile, that's where you're going to second row in all these different uh, areas to and um, starting with the video, because that is really critical. So, a couple ways to get the video for us. So, if you if were we at NCSA, edit the video for you. You would see here um, when you open it up how many you have left. And you'd simply upload footage, and then we would edit and post it. Um, if you have a, a YouTube, you can put it up here, and it's going to show on your profile immediately. Huddle is more for uh, team sports. Um, so that's how you would get it. Now, what we need on the video, um, that's important because for softball, we want skills video. Whether you're taking lessons or practice, that's the type of footage that can be best suited for coaches to fully evaluate you. You can game video, but I say, you know, it's not always uh, filmed very good. You have some example by position that you can see. If you go up on NCSA University tab, and directly below there's a resource library. In your resource here on the left, there's video guidelines for all sports. Find the softball. At the bottom of that softball written out guidelines, it's going to show you these examples. So that would be a, um, a huge year uh, to be able to see those. 
your keys were those measurables that I was talking about, so those velocities, your slow velocity, running home to first speed, the shuttle, if you can get some of these other that extra speed. If you go to camp, you're going to have the others. Um, yeah, be able to measure those. That's awesome. Put that in because the more you can have here for the coaches to see, the better they can evaluate and assess your talent. I do your F1 because um, sometimes this gets overlooked about putting your statistics, your batting average, pitching statistics. Um, so under these, once you have a season, when you're putting your seasons in, whether it's club season or high school season, um, you can up your schedule. That would be right below your jersey number. And you can even put if your school has a uh, website with your schedule on it, just put the web uh, address in there. Coaches can click on it or take a picture or, or save it as a PDF. You can upload it that way. And then blue, add edit stats button that's to the save button. That's where you're going to put your statistics. You can put your schedule would be here under events. You can list it out one by one. Either way or both. Thing that's important um, is your preferences and how you select these. So on the edit profile tab and then preferences, you know, you want to that the, you are selecting states and areas that you are interested in. Um, you have visions, the size, things like that. Don't say yes to everything. Don't say yes to everything. Um, the best way this is going to work to give you the right that is, is that you're selected. You can always uh, to do it state state by state, or simply, you know, click on the top of doing the whole, whole region. So in on the, the profile part, the next to look at with you guys, once you have this profile built, is uh, the opportunities that are out there. To play college level, there's a lot of um, schools that over 1,600, and I broke these down. So the first four groups here are uh, four-year schools, and then this JC are the Two year and the four groups within that. Let's start out here top NCAA Division One. Those, those are the most schools that people are familiar with. They're on the TV um, that's playing right now. The, the last state school school teams and schools that have programs are just under 300. The scholarship any one of those can have is 12 at the maximum. They can split those. Up. Generally, their rosters at around 18. And sure, really, is that the best players and top travel teams are going to get at these, you know, schools that are currently playing, you know, listen to what types of odds they had as they talk about them on TV. So the uh, PGF, uh, ASA Gold, and, and uh, Triple Crown, and some of those top tournaments. Now, the new recruiting rule um, recruiting, um, from the Division One coaches can only take play with you after September 1st during your new year. So that you know, early offers and you know is no um, that's gonna I said now can take place September 1st. And then division two there's 200 or 300 team that group sizes are, are um, 7.2 that they can have and they split those the roster sizes could be a little smaller but only around eight Team. Now, keeps overlap with that. Two teams can beat your lower level division one. So, competitiveness there. Um, and the thing about division two is they can hold tryouts for high school juniors and seniors. Top programs do make offers uh, to high school sophomores uh, at some time, but certainly the juniors. The contact there is going to be uh, June 15th of when they can contact you. but. Your coach can contact these coaches. Um, you can call these co coaches, and if they answer the phone, they can talk to you before you know, that uh, junior year. Then you got in three. That's the biggest group. There's over 400 schools that compete at that level. There are softball scholarships. Um, the raw size is tend to be small, and it could be you know two teams because they might feel the JV. Now put together academic uh, packages. They Packages, which would be like academic money, merit, need based, um, and typically you would have a tryout once you're enrolled 
there to be able to make the team. Captains will finish um, recruiting in the fall of your senior year for opportunities or spots on those teams. UIA. Uh, not many of you are always familiar with NAIA, but I want you to, to take you there. It's a different organization. They have their own recruiting rules. It stands for National Organization of Intercollegiate Athletics. There's just under 200 members. They can have 10 softball scholarships, so it is more than a Division II. And their roster sizes can be more like the Division III, where it's uh, very small, or they have a JV program, it's going to be twice as big. And since they can have 10 scholarships, the TNI schools can certainly beat your lower level of Division I. General competitiveness is about what the Division IIs are. They, your Division II schools, can do tryouts for high school players. And then junior college, that's your two year school. So you have girls here, and there's the other. The other group is your West Coast, your Cali, and up in the Northwest. They don't compete on national level, they're all owned. Um, so, one schools for the junior college nationally, they have 24 scholarships. That's going to be twice as many as your NCAA Division One. So when I talk with families and they say, "Want to go?" The most scholarship money is, is you know, you simply tell them that, that if that's the case, then you've got to look at the Division One junior college because they have 24 full scholarships they can offer. Offer 12, and that's just towards the um, uh, the board. Here is that the big colleges can compete. Um, they also like your, your Division Two and the way schools, schools, the junior colleges can do tryouts. Um, your top are going to be in the warmer state. Their website and see other schools that compete. So I can success and memberships with us, so we would help you do that. So that's uh, our opportunities here, over 1,600 um, that can play college sports for softball. Day two is uh, with the rules. All right, so um, the Division two NCAA schools have rules they have to follow. And the base are is going to be June 15th after your sophomore year. So June 15th when you're a junior in the summer of your junior year there. Uh, that's when your Division II coaches can uh, be practiced. Email, uh, text, or call you. And that's going to happen for Division One now until September of your junior year. So that's when the Division One coaches can email, call, and text. Before that, you can email um, anytime, and you can call the two coaches, Division Three, NAIA, and Junior Colleges. They can talk to you. They answer the phone. You can make visits and meet with coaches on campus, except during dead period. Now, again, Division One coaches, none of it can happen until September 1st of your junior year. They meet with you on campus. They can't talk to you on the phone before that. And talk to your um, travel coaches. And I'm uh, this obviously is a little um, so interfere with your where are the all other sports. This would be Division One. I'll say website for that. And two and three is going to be broken down this way. I'll say the new rules. The new rule wouldn't be on these publications. The new rule out um, just last month. You understand what opportunities you have. You know the rules. You want to start looking at schools. Right. It's good to be looking at schools, researching them, their roster. And I pulled this roster um, because it's got the arrows at the top, which you can sort these out. And that's going to be so helpful. You can, look at, you know, the smallest, the shortest. You can look at graduation years, which is going to be most helpful. You can look at, look at positions. So if you want to see how many catchers do they have or how many juniors do they have, you would sort those columns. I'll look at, is this average size? It looks pretty average. 
you know, really, um, eight or so. And then where are the girls from? Are they all from the same state? Are they diverse? There's, you know, some liars here, a couple from the West Coast. I would um, imagine that this school was a uh, West Coast, New York school for the majority. So things want to notice. And then pick one girl. Maybe, state, maybe your position. Say about their um, career before they got to college. They did, you know, highlights. But it's all going to have their high school. So that can be helpful, you know, take what they're highlighting uh, here. You know, um, this was a two sport league. And also it says what they're majoring in, which is very helpful too. So this will be eye opening for you to be able to get a good idea and gauge on the school. Question of things that, uh, especially for you younger, that you should be looking at and filling out. So when you get to the websites, it might be a whole page here, questionnaire, or it might be at the top, um, just under a general recruit um, or athletic department. Uh, you recruit. So you'll have to look. It's going to be, it's going to vary a little bit. But Phil's question out airs out will help you get on the coach uh, list and in their database. That you're still going to want to do is communicate with those coaches personally. personally right? And so this section talks about that. Um, make those emails personal. Letting them know why you're interested in school, what you like about their school or team. Directions. Were parents alone? You know, somebody on the team. You just know that. Yeah. You did take the time to fill out their questionnaire. Tell them that. And always include your recruiting profile. Hopefully it's filled out. Like we talked about at the start here. Ask questions usually is going to help you get more replies back from coaches. And um, what types of questions? You know, um, the high school division three and junior college. Those coaches can answer questions from anybody. Okay, so whether you're a senior or whether you're a freshman or eighth grader. Or, um, with your underclassmen. Um, the Division One and Two won't be able to. So any Division Three and Junior Colleges, ask them questions. I'm in mean, any level. Typical first questions you would want to say, make them specific. Hey, coach, I see you have uh, four juniors on the team, and one of them is a catcher. I'm currently looking for a catcher in my um, in the 2019 class. So specific. Another, what tournaments uh, are they attending? So there are two questions that I would highly recommend that you start out with. We covered a lot, um, but I want to give you some steps here to your success that you find the right school. And as we started out with, you know, that's going to be a key is completing your NCSA profile and keeping it up to date. So making sure your grades are posted. Trans Transcript, report cards, ACT, SAT, if you're upperclassmen. Um, video. And this new, should happen twice a year. You get new skills video because you get better. You get stronger. And make sure you're showing your best. Uh, stats, your battery pitching stats. Um, make sure your teams, your travel teams, your summer teams are posted. So you'll be playing in that. Uh, those preferences periodically where you're uh, looking at states. Make contact number as a junior and senior. Your cell numbers are posted. And be sure that you're active on the account. Because coaches can see the last time that you logged in. Coaches can see when you favorite their school by using that orange star. So use these uh, that you have here with your account um, to be able to get you that attention from the coach. Help in the learning part with uh, the MCSA University tab. You got your source library there. You got your recruiting classes. Take advantage of that. And the thing is, looking at colleges, do a search, check the rosters, see seasons when, um, how they did this past season, and the target list of schools that you can start contacting and connecting with. And so I'm going. You know, sure you continue to communicate with coaches through emails, engage them, 
um, updates and questions. But keep those short, comment on their seasons, their success. <coughs> Follow social media if you're um, somebody that is on social media. Another is calling coaches. You want to make sure that uh, you start calling coaches as well. We have classes like uh, coach communications time on your recruiting, just like you do on your skills. So weekly, if not daily, you know, looking at schools, emailing coaches. And you have the membership that includes uh, personal coaching sessions with uh, one of us soft recruiting coaches. And take them to um, you know, set up a session. I've been doing some get their summer game plans in line here. My uh, family. But have your little circle with the picture membership information, contact us at the office, our hours, and the coaching session. And that's your calendar where you pick um, the type, and then it's going to allow you to sign up for our open days. I'd like to touch on down here is uh, for the NCAA, if you're going to play Division One or Two, you need to be enrolled in the eligibility center. Generally, they recommend that as a sophomore, junior. Um, you know, you haven't quite taken the ACT, SAT, but you can get in there. Eight dollar fee, and um, then you're able to do official visits. Okay, without being in the eligibility center, you can't do an official visit to NCAA Division One or Two. And then ACT or SAT, you're filling out that information. Put uh, for the code. Of where you want it to be sent, 9999. Now it has its own separate. So if you are in touch and contact with NAI coaches, you will eventually have to register for that, which would be an $80 fee as well. And making the ACT or SAT, the code is going to be 9876. So that's um, what I have here for you. Here's our contact number, retreat uh, uh, NCSA sports is a way you can get in touch if you do have students. Um, but if there's anything that I can answer right now, um, to do that. 